chapter 3. It says, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant. Time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down. And a time to build up. Look at this. A time to weep. And a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. I want you to look at your neighbor this morning and tell them he's the God of the shift. You may be seated. He's the God of the shift. According to the scripture, there's an appointed time for everything in life, an appointed time. Someone say an appointed time. And Ecclesiastes, through the wisdom of Solomon, the son of David, clearly speaks of a number of appointed seasons in a man or a woman's life. I think when we read about these seasons this morning, these are things that we can take to prayer. These are things that we can take into our prayer tonight. These are things that we can take into our prayer this week. Seasons. Someone say seasons. Now, the question is here, what season are you in? What season are you in? What seasons have passed? What seasons are you facing for the first time? Because sometimes, as it's been said in the scripture, these are seasons that some of us might face for the very first time. And we don't know how to deal with those seasons. Another question is, what seasons are you facing once again? What seasons are you facing once again? And the reason I can say that to every single one of us this morning is because there's no mention in Scripture that we will face a season only once. There's no mention in Scripture that we will face a season only once. See, because a season is not an event, but a season is a collection of things designed and designated by God to set our destiny in order. Let me put it this way. The season you are going through in your life is so that God can get your life in order. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Winter, spring, summer, fall. They come every year. You just caught it, didn't you? Winter, spring, summer, fall, we never skip it. It comes every year. Someone say every year. Because that's God's plan. That's God's design to bring new life. But the immature of mind, and how many know sometimes they are in the house of the Lord? The immature of mind or the mind of a child thinks that when I'm done, I'm done. Come on, parents. The immature mind, the mind of a child thinks that when I'm done, I'm done. That's why when a young person has to do something over again, they catch a fit. <laughs> when a young person has to clean their room again. Come on, somebody. Yes, it's dirty again. You got to clean it. When they got to throw the trash again. Yes, it's full to the top and overflowing and the dog is eating it. You got to throw it. See, when an immature young person or a child like mine has to do something, that, that's when they catch a fit. They complain, they cry, they gripe because they have not developed the intestinal fortitude that comes with the process of maturity. And that's why as parents, when we hear our children crying, what do we do? We just do it for them. We just do it 
for them so that we can ease our immediate pain. But what we're really doing is stunting their growth. Somebody clap if you caught that word. Hey. Seasons come so that our life could be placed in God's order. Someone say God's order. Because God is a father. He's a father. And the character of a good father is to grow his children to be great. That's the character of a good father is to raise his kids. Ooh. Who's, who, who's, who's in it here and you've either raised kids or you're raising kids as we speak. And I tell you, you don't raise your children to be a failure. You don't raise your children to be on drugs. You don't raise your children to spend time in prison. You don't raise your children so they could suffer the rest of their life. When you raise your children, you raise your children so they can be everything that God has called them to be. And the character of God is to raise children in the house of God. And when he raises his children, he raises his children to be great. Touch your neighbor, tell him he's making you great. I came to tell you on this Sunday morning that here at Victory Outreach, he's raising kings, he's raising queens, he's raising princes in the house of the Lord. I'm going to need somebody to understand that there is a prophetic word over your life that you're not going to stay in the valley. You're not going to stay in the wilderness. There is a promised land. There is a promise. There is a destiny over you. Touch your neighbor and tell him you're a king or a queen. What I believe the Lord is saying in it. Who's with me this morning? What I believe the Lord is saying in a new season is that nobody's going to do it for you. Oh, I lost you, didn't I? I came to tell you in a new season, God is saying, my son, my daughter, you're going to have to get up. You're going to have to stop crying. You're going to have to clean up what you messed up. You're going to have to fix what is broken. God says, I'm telling you that this is your season to shift. This is your season to step into the promise. This is your season to correct and fix what is broken within your life. He says, I've given you the promise. I've given you the word. And I'm about to give you a new unction of the Holy Ghost so you can get back in the workshop. Woo. Tell your neighbor, something's about to shift. See, a full-grown adult understands that God uses seasons. Let me say that again. A full-grown adult. Mm -mm -mm. A full-grown adult understands that God uses seasons to, his, to equip his children for their God-given assignment. They understand that the things you faced before, you might have to face them again. But this time you face them in a different form. Someone say different form. Now, it, 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 it's just that this time around, when you face it, you're better equipped for the situation. <laughs> Come on, where's my adult at? You're better equipped. Tell your neighbor, you're better equipped. Now, what I'm saying to you is that not something that I'm not saying to you that something bad is going to happen. I'm saying that something good is about to happen. I'm not here to say that a, a problem you faced in the past is going to come back and bite you. I, I'm here to let you know that those things are behind you and your promises are ahead of you. But you still are going to have to face some things in your life. But this time you're you're better equipped. And what I'm saying is that when unexpected situations rise in our life this time around, you shall not be shaken. You shall not be shaken when a season. Now, no, I notice this. I'm not saying God, but I'm saying a season. Somebody say a season. I'm not saying God. God already set the seasons in motions, but I'm talking about a season. Somebody say a season. Because winds blow in a season and waters flow in a season. And when a season removes a thing, when a season removes a thing, when a season removes a relationship, when a season comes in and removes some money, when a season comes in and messes up your program, this time you shall not be shaken because God is getting your life in order and getting you ready for the new things he's about to bring. Oh, my God. Tell your neighbor your season's about to shift. The fire that's in you is stronger than the fire that's trying to burn you. 
I'll say it one more time so I can get it inside everybody's spirit. I told you I came with a torch this morning. The fire inside of you is stronger than the fire that is trying to burn you. Where does that fire come from? Where does that fire come from? Someone say fire. fire. They'll say it like you believe it. Say fire. fire. Come on, one more time. Fire. Where does that fire come from? Fire comes from prayer. Hmm. Fire comes from spending time with him. And we've learned this. Adults have learned this. Young people, children, spiritually young-minded people understand we've learned this. That every time a season presented itself, you had to shift your posture. Woo! You had to go from walking on your feet to walking on your knees. You had to go from walking on your knees to laying on your belly. Because you said, if the season is going to change, I'm going to have to do what Jacob did. I'm going to have to wrestle with God for it. I'm going to have to wrestle with God for it. See, people who stay stuck in a season don't have a prayer life. But people who can shift the season are people that understand for that season to shift, it can only happen in a spirit of prayer. Someone say prayer. prayer. Jacob. The second son of Abraham, the promised child of Isaac, needed his season to shift. And he wrestled his way into a shift. Tell, tell your neighbor, wrestle your way into a shift. No, tell him, don't look at me. Look at your neighbor. Do you love them? Do you, lo you, don't, see, you don't love them. See, but if you love them, you'll talk to them and tell them you're going to have to wrestle your way into a shift. Jacob came to the fort of Jabbok. He said, I need my season to shift. That's why he told the angel that he was wrestling with. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Woo. I will not let you go until you bless me. Imagine the tenacity. Imagine the hunger. Imagine the divine frustration. Mm. Imagine being in a place so long that you were ready for it to change. Imagine being sick and tired of being sick and tired. Imagine of being sick of being sick. Imagine being sick of being depressed. Imagine being sick of struggling with anxiety and fear. Imagine being sick of feeling like a failure. Imagine being sick of your marriage being all messed up. Imagine being sick of your kids being out there in the world just partying and you're trying to get ready for church on a Sunday morning and you don't even know their whereabouts. Imagine being so sick of people keeping you down and holding you down and you being frustrated with yourself. Jacob came to the river. He came to the fort of Chabok and he said, I'm going to have to wrestle myself into this new season but you gotta be sick and tired of being sick and tired you you gotta want it bad enough i'll say it again you gotta want it bad enough you gotta be so desperate you gotta be so hungry you gotta be so frustrated you gotta be so angry with your situation you gotta be so hey i'm tired of going to the doctor i'm tired of being broke i'm tired of fighting with you hey, i'm getting ready to shift my season Tell your neighbor, you're going to have to wrestle. And he's so, so desperate. He tells the angel, who reads their Bible? He tells the angel, I will not let you go. The angel says, let me go. Day is broken. It's time to go on with the day. He says, I will not let you go until you bless me. He says, I know you got to go, but I ain't going nowhere. Okay, I know you got to go. I know the time has clicked, but you, I'm not going anywhere until you let me know that my season has shifted. I'm not going anywhere until you let me know that God's promise is still on my, oh my God. Come on, somebody. Clap to the Lord if you're ready for your season to shift. He says, I will not let you go. Tell your neighbor, I'm not letting you go. He said, I will not let you go. He said, I need you to release me. Release me from my past. Whew. I've made mistakes. I've deceived people. I've cheated. I've stolen. I've hurt others knowingly and unknowingly. 
and I have blemished my name. I will not let you go until you renew me and release me from my past. He says, I will not let you go. Say, I'm not letting him go until you revigorate me. That means until you ignite me one more time. I've been laboring under my father-in-law for my uncle for 14 years. For 14 years, I've served. For 14 years, I've labored. I brought increase wherever I go, and I'm tired, God. But God, I need you to reignite me. I need you to light me on fire. I will not let you go until you bless me. I need you to give me my confidence back. I need you to give me myself. I've been serving as a slave, but I need my confidence back. I need my self-esteem back. I need to pick my head up and hold it up in the house of God because I know that you are with me. I need to be reinvigorated for the battle. I need to be reignited for the battle. Woo. he said I will not let you go until you bless me tell your neighbor don't let him go until you renew me until you re-envision me until you remind me of the promise on my life on that day when my father took his hands and he laid his hands on me and he told me you are going to receive my anointing you are going to receive my mantle every one of us remembers the day when God laid his hand upon our life and he says I've called you I've chosen you I've separated you I've called you he says I will not let you go until you bless me until you remind me of who I am in you until you remind me that I'm a child of the living God that I'm the head and not the tail that I'm above and not beneath that I'm the apple of your eye that you've called me to pastor you've called me to lead you called me to see my family says anybody here have a promise from the Lord in their life he says I will not let you go until you bless me. tell your neighbor don't don't let him go I will not let you go until you reestablish me in my purpose I'm prophesying to somebody because for your season to shift, you've got to wrestle. Someone say wrestle. I will not let you go until you reestablish me in my purpose. Watch this. Until you give me favor from on high. <laughs> until you begin to give me favor I will not let you go God because I have sought man's favor and man has given me favor and my job has given me favor and people have given me favor and sometimes I get sad when the people that gave me favor walk out of my life but one thing that I have discovered is that there's nothing better than the favor of God in my life. Oh my. When you've got the favor of God in your life, man can come and go, but God's favor stays on you. He says, wherever you set your foot, he said, Joshua, wherever you place your foot, he said, Joshua, as you go in wherever you, I'm going to give you that territory because I have given you favor and you need to wrestle with God because you've been pleasing man too long and it's time to get the favor from heaven on your life. So I won't let you go until you radicalize my faith. Until you give me not a facelift. <laughs> but a faith lift. Because if I'm going to shift my season, say, let's do a little call and response. Say, shift your season. Unless I shift, if I'm going to shift my season, I've got to go in by faith. <laughs> Things may not look the way I want them to look. <laughs> Things may not be the way, the, things I, the way I want them to be. I might not feel the way I want to feel right 
this minute. Back. Some of you are here, you're like, I don't even want to be here right now. But I came to tell you if your season is going to shift, he has to activate your faith and you have to say something has to happen in the spirit before it happens in the natural. I wonder if there's anyone here right now that says, God, I'm ready for you to radicalize my faith because my season is about to shift. Because the promise is too strong. And there are benefits in a new season. And I'm not going to speak much longer. But tonight I want you to come back. Tell your neighbor, come back. But come back. Don't come back and spectate. Come back with a prayerful spirit. Come back tonight like your season has already shifted. Who feels like your season is already moving? It's already shifting right now. Four wisdom keys from a new season. Number one, the, the scripture says to remove and replace. Someone say remove. Say replace. Good Lord, that's strong. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10, he tells the prophet, see today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, watch this, but to build and to plant. <laughs> What's the prophetic principle is that before you plant, you've got to break. <laughs> before you plant something new, you've got to break something old. David cried out to God, after he sinned with Bathsheba. After he sinned with Bathsheba, he cried out to God and look at what he said. He said, purge me, O God, make me clean once again. Whew. And I want to tell you the season of fire that some people go through can sometimes really be a season of consequence. It's not that God is burning you. It's that you're burning you. And God says, go ahead and let them burn. So that they can be purged. The wages of sin is death. And the onset of spiritual death, watch this, does not come through satanic attack. Now, I might lose some of you here, but who's still with me? Who's with me in the spirit? The onset of spiritual death comes not through satanic attack, but through personal compromise. And I got to tell you, don't listen when they tell you, I'm all right. How you doing? I'm all right. No, you're not. How you feeling? I'm all right. Mm -mm, I don't think so. And the reason you ain't all right is because you don't pray. <laughs> Some of you going to, you're going to, what's going to happen is you're going to cancel your Facebook and Instagram this weekend. Because we see you, all you do is eat. All you do is walk in the flesh. We never see you pray. We never see you seeking the face of God. We never take in, see you taking pictures with the people of God. You're in some dark corner somewhere doing something you're not supposed to do. Now you're mad because your season won't shift. And when David wanted his season to shift and he had sinned with Bathsheba, he went to God. He said, let that fire purge me. Let that fire cleanse me. Let, oh, my God. Somebody caught it. Somebody praise God like your disciple is about to shift. <laughs> Woo. The greatest sin is the sin of prayerlessness. I'll tell you why. Because when you don't pray, you open up your life. For the world to put its stuff on you. You look good this morning. You got a suit on a jacket. But if you were to open it up, you would have all kinds of worldly stuff stuck to you. 
then you can't praise, you can't worship God, you can't give him glory. Why? Because you haven't prayed. You haven't prayed. Prayerlessness is dubious because it opens the door for the decaying factors of sin to attach themselves to your life. And if, sin, and if sin can get on you, it can get on what's yours. And so in order to shift, someone say shift. You've got to uproot and you've got to replace. Am I teaching okay? Yes. Isaiah 61, 3 says to bestow on them the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. And so what I speak over your life in this new season is I speak spiritual health over your life. I prophesy spiritual health over your life. You say, Pastor, are you a prophet? I'm not a prophet. But when, when, the, when there was a valley full of dry bones, he told the man, prophesy. So I'm talking to some dry bones. I speak health over you. I prophesy spiritual health. I, your prayer life is about to be ignited. Your relationship with God is about, before this day is over, I'm telling you, man, you're going to be speaking in tongues at work. You're going to be speaking it. You're going to wake up at five in the morning with a hunger to pray. You're going to get have a Bible, a highlighter. You're going to be saying, hey, I need to catch the fire. I came to light you on fire. This Someone say shift. shift. Secondly, four wisdom keys. I got to move fast to cast away and to gather. Cast away and gather. In other words, no distractions. Whew. And, and it's the distractions we like. It's the distractions we enjoy that keep us from our destiny. It's the stuff. Woo! I feel the Holy Spirit when I say stuff. Everybody say stuff. Because you have accumulated a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> you got clothes in the closet. Your trunk of your car is full of all kinds of stuff. You got baby stuff. You got work stuff. It's in your back seat. You got nothing but stuff. You go in your house. You got stuff. You got a hundred pairs of shoes. You got stuff on your in, in your closet, your house, on your phone, in your car. You got money in the bank. You got all kinds of stuff, and you like it. You got people stored up in your life like stuff. And I'll tell you what God is saying is you're going to have to separate from your stuff. Jacob got to that river, man. He was a rich man. 14 years, he accumulated a lot of stuff. Touch your neighbor. Tell him, you got a lot of stuff, bro. Sis. And for 14 years, he served under his uncle, man. He brought a lot of prosperity to his uncle, and he accumulated a lot of stuff. He had two wives, one for the bedroom and one for the doghouse. He had a pretty one and an ugly one. He just had all kinds of stuff. <laughs> it's amazing how he had all kinds of stuff, but he was still empty. And it came to his life, a point in his life where he said, this stuff doesn't fulfill me. That the blessing is not the stuff. The blessing is the favor of God in my life. Someone say no distractions. Because those things keep your spirit empty. They weigh you down. They weighed you down too long. The habits, the behaviors, the attitudes, the people, the things, the things that have captured your attention. These things designated to distract and disrupt a divine move of God in your life. To distract and disrupt a divine move of God in your life. Number three, to wage war and to bring peace. Ooh. Someone say, wage war. wage war. Say, bring peace. Here's the word. In your new season, no more drama. I thought I'd get a bigger clap on that, Shirley. One more time. In your new season, no more 
drama. Because in your new season, you're going to fight the necessary battles. And you're going to make peace with those you need for your future. <laughs> you're going to make peace with the people that you feel rejected you, but you still need. You're going to make peace with the people that hurt you, but you still need. Ooh. That's why many people are going to come back to the house of the Lord. Because they're going to hear there's no more drama. Can I hear an amen? See, there's a season to fight. And there's a season to forgive. Woo. My God. I, I tell you, look at look at your spouse. Look at the person next to you. Say, I, I forgive you. I forgive. See, oh, God's quiet. My God. <laughs> Maybe they didn't do anything to you, but there's someone that did. And I'll tell you this: your future, hear me, doesn't depend on your net worth. It depends on your network. So many people have it so confused that it, you think it's about the money you have in the bank that's going to get you forward. It's not the money you have in the bank. It's the people you have in your life. It's the relationships. Because when I came to God, I had relationships in my life that weren't taking me up. They were taking me down. Just like some of you, you're here this morning. You, you're all messed up because of your relationships. Because you can't get along with people because people don't like the people really don't like you. And the reason they don't like you is because you're rough. So you're rough in how you talk. You're rough in how you dress. You, you can't smile. And people, frankly, are scared of you. That's too real. Huh? Let me talk to this side. They're scared of you. They're scared to partner with you. They're scared to connect with you. But you know what's going to happen in this new season? God's going to hit you with a change. God's uh, fire is going to burn out all that stuff. Say no more drama. And lastly, to break down and build up stronger. Break down, build up. Say that. Let's do some calm response. Say break down. Break down. Say it stronger. Say break now. Break Say build up. Build up. One more time. Break down. Break down. Say build up. build up. Say break down. Break down. Build, up. build up. Come on. Break down. Break down. Build up. Build up. Let's get it in our spirit. Break down. Build up. Break down. Build up. Come on, give God praise right now if he's building you up. Come on, praise him right now if he's building you up in the spirit realm. To break down, to purge, to cleanse, to pull out. Watch this. And to fix the flaws in your character. I'm going to share more tonight why this point is so powerful and important for this church. But he wants to break down and build up to fix the flaws in your character because the weight of this promise that's on this whole house Touch your neighbor and tell him it's on the house. See, and that's what some of you are going to have to shift right now. Those of you that come to church thinking that God has something just for you, you're out of tune. Because it's not about you. It's about the promise on the house. Someone say the house. And the weight, someone say the weight of the promise that has been on this house from the very beginning will crush you. It 
will crush you. In the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy was in a house and the house got taken up in a tornado and brought to Never Never Land or wherever it was. And it fell on the wicked witch of the East and she was crushed. Wickedness will be crushed. If you are a gang member and you bring wickedness to this church, you will be crushed. If you are a drug addict and you bring wickedness to this church, you will be crushed. If you come to destroy this church, you will be crushed. Because God doesn't play games with his promises. But if your character is not strong, you will be crushed. Your marriage will be crushed. You'll be crushed because the weight of the promise will not crush you. What will crush you if you are not allowing God to make you mature. And I came to tell you this morning, we're going into that new season with mature leaders. He's going to break down and build you up stronger because he needs you. You are a game changer. You are a destiny shaper. You are a chain breaker. You are an influencer. And you are a world shaker. Go ahead and clap for that because that's what you are. That's what you will be. That's what he's building you up to be. He's, ooh, man, he's building you up. He's breaking you down so he could build you back up. You're a game changer, Luis. You're a game changer, Crispin. You're a world shaker, Pauline. He's taking you down so he could build you up because there's a promise on this house, Jose. There's a promise on this house, Pastor Victor. And he's looking for the ones like Paul and Rosalind and Miller Jr. and Stephanie that say, hey, I'm willing to let God break me down so that he could build me up stronger, better, faster, stronger. Terry neighbor, you're a shifter. You're a game changer. You're an influencer. We only build kings, queens, and priests in this house. That's all we do. That's all we do. We, 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 God has called us to build winners. But Jesus told Peter, because Peter had a big calling on his life. Tell your neighbor, Peter had a big call. But some of you who read your Bible know what happened when the Lord came to Peter and he said, Peter, the enemy has asked for you that he might sift you like wheat. He said, but be of good cheer. I prayed for you because there's a promise on your life. Now, here, now here's the trick of that scripture. It's not a trick, but here's the truth of that scripture. Peter was sifted. But he wasn't taken out. And some of you have been going through a sifting season in your life. But I came to tell you it's because he's breaking you down to build you back up again. And I'm going to need somebody in this place to understand that there's a new season about to shift in your life. But you know where it's going to shift? It's going to shift at this altar. And if you're ready to shift with the move of God, then I want you to be unapologetic. And I want you to begin to 